Uh, thank you, Bani. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Speaker Lord Alan Velasco and his team of deputy speakers. Sec. Lafervida Pascual. Yusek Jacinto Paras. Asek Marera, Maria Rowena Flores Saban of the Presidential Legislative Liaison Office. Honorable Erico Aristotel Amintado, Chairperson, Committee on Science and Technology. Mr. Donald Amado Caballero, Committee Secretary on Science and Technology. Our very own DOS Secretary, Fortunato de la Peña. So, Director Lita Suerte Pipe of the DOST DLLO. Friends and colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. It is a pleasure uh, for me to welcome all of you to the Picard webinar on SMP response to the ASF challenge. The past several months, since July 2019, in the first case of African swine fever or ASF was detected in the Philippines, have been extra daunting for all of us, especially the swine producers. Even consumers and pork lovers become wary and desolate as prices of pork soared to all-time high when supply dwindled. Just like the infamous COVID-19, ASF also still has no known cure. And as it spreads through the country, it threatens food security at a time when everyone is already having difficulty with the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Indeed, ASF is devastating viral disease of pigs of all ages. It's highly contagious and fatal with mortality reaching as high as 100%. And because of this, we at the DOST Picard have to do our share to mitigate the effects of this dreadful disease. In May last year, we conducted our first webinar in partnership with the Bureau of Animal Industry of the Department of Agriculture. We equip our project partners who are managing small swine farms with basic biosecurity principles and measures in the hope that we can help contain ASF outbreaks. Early this year, DOST Picard held a, ser a series of consultations with selected private swine industry players the Academe, the Bureau of Animal Industry, the Bureau of Agricultural Research, and DA Biotech Program Office to look for ways to effectively and efficiently manage ASF. As per agreement, two sets of R&D proposals will be packaged and funded, one for short-term management of the disease and another for long-term. The short-term project will focus on testing the efficacy of imported ASF vaccines before they are recommended for local use. Hopefully we can implement the project within the first semester of 2021. The long-term project on the other hand will focus on vaccine development and will involve enhancing facilities and human resources for vaccine production in the country. Currently, we have an ongoing project with the Central Luzon State University on validation of ASF virus nanogold biosensor tent uh, biosensor test kit. Led by Dr. Clar Clarissa Ibon Domingo, the project is producing the ASFB test kit for field testing and initial distribution. As of February 2021, the team has produced 500 test kits for wider testing and distribution. Support to validate the test kit with the Bureau of Animal Industry is also being pursued to obtain a certificate of product registration. We are happy to tell you that the private drug companies and swine farms are with us in this project, helping the team of Dr. Domingo in the continuous testing of this developed kit in their farms. Aside from this, the DOST has recently approved an ASF project under the Bi Virology, Science and Technology Institute of the Philippines. And another program on ASF entitled Nobel Approaches in African Swine Fever Diagnostics genomics and proteomics, which is composed of four projects. I believe if we join hands and be resilient, we can help battle this disease and emerge productive and triumphant in the end. With that, I wish you all a fruitful discussion and a blessed day. Again, a welcome to the webinar on, on SNT response to the ASF challenge. Maraming salamat po at magandang umaga sa ating lahat. Maraming salamat, Dr. Ray. Today, Pa, we are also fortunate to have in this webinar meeting our 
Dear Secretary of the Department of Science and Technology, si Dr. Fortunato Boyti de la Peña. And he will be giving us a short message. So, Secretary de la Peña. Thank you very much. And, uh, warmest greetings to uh, everyone. First and foremost, I would like to uh, thank uh, our uh, lawmakers for allowing uh, DOST to conduct this online legislative policy information and uh, advocacy campaign. Uh, we also thank the DOST's uh, uh, Department Legislative Liaison Office for coordinating this uh, activity. I am happy that uh, the DOST Philippine Council for Agriculture, Aquatic and uh, Natural Resources, RMD or PICARD responded to the call to hold this webinar in order for us to highlight the response of the science and technology sector to the current challenge on African swine fever or ASF, which is uh, devastating the local swine industry. The first case of ASF was recorded in July 2019 here in the Philippines, particularly in the province of Rizal. The disease has spread to the northern and southern parts of Luzon and to the southern parts of Mindanao. The ASF continues to spread to the different islands of the country despite efforts being implemented by the Department of Agriculture, uh, Bureau of Animal Industry, and uh, apparently the current biosecurity protocol being implemented by most small-scale and the large commercial farms uh, is not uh, sufficient in controlling the spread of the ASF virus. I am sure that the presentations that has been prepared for this webinar will help us understand what the OST is doing through Picard to help the swine industry manage the ASF disease. Although the efforts of the DOST is through research and development, such as in the development of diagnostic systems and platforms, as well as our efforts to establish the Virology Science and Technology Institute of the Philippines to enhance our research capability. I believe that the research and development initiatives of the DOST and PICARD are supporting right now, which, are, which we are supporting right now, will truly help the industry manage the disease and will help in the repopulation activities. Right now, we have supported the project on validating the ASFB Nano Gold Biosensor Test Kit, which Clarissa Domingo of CLSU will discuss later. We will also soon support the implementation of the R&D projects of, on the development of a real-time polymerase chain reaction for point of need detection of ASF as part of our initial efforts at the Virology uh, Science and Technology Institute as well as the program on ASF diagnostics, genomics, and proteomics. Finally, through uh, our uh, Science for Change program uh, component, the uh, business innovation uh, through science and technology or the DOST BIST program, we hope to support the establishment of a uh, uh, mobile laboratory unit for point of need diagnostics in order to provide immediate response during disease outbreak situation. This will be uh, in support of a, uh, a technology startup company. All of these initiatives will surely help in the early detection and control of the disease, thus reducing the economic impact of ASF outbreaks. So again, I would like to uh, thank uh, Picard uh, for leading this webinar. And uh, I uh, hope we will have a fruitful discussion later as an aside, I uh, just learned, and I have to verify this, that our main presenter, Dr. Clarissa Domingo of CLS, CLSU, was a former DOST PCHRD uh, scholar. Okay? If that is correct, then I am very proud that our DOST scholars uh, in the different fields are really uh, helping the country in addressing the pro various problems related to health in particular, uh, those working on COVID-19, and here we have uh, uh, our uh, uh, scholars and researchers working on ASF. So that is uh, very good news to me. Again, uh, very pleasant morning to all of you, and mabuhay po tayong lahat. 
Thank you very much, uh, Secretary Boy de la Peña. At this point, po, we would like to acknowledge the support of the different uh, groups and individuals. To so start off, we would like to thank the leadership of the House of Representatives, led by Speaker Lord Alan Velasco and his team of deputy speakers. We also would like to thank Yusek Luz Verfeda Pascual, Yusek Jacinto V. Paras, Asek Maria Ruena Flores Saban of the Presidential Legislative Liaison Office. We also would like to thank the chairperson and the Committee on Science and Technology, Honorable Enrico Aristotel Aumentado. Also the Committee Secretary on Science and Technology, Mr. Donald Amado Montes Caballero. I think he is with us today. Thank you very much, sir. And also would like to thank uh, the OST DLLO office and the director, um, Dr. Maria Suerte Felipe. So maraming maraming salamat po for your support in this webinar uh, meeting. So to give you an overview of the topics that we'll be covering for this morning, so we'll be having three presentations. Our first topic will be on the R&D initiatives of, the, of DOST Picard on the management of African swine fever. This will be followed by presentation section of ASF using Nano Gold Biosensor Test Kit to be presented by, by our expert from Central Luzon State University. And then the last will be on the science-based ASF management strategies to be delivered by an expert from the Bioassets Corporation, a private animal disease diagnostic company. So para po sa ating unang paksa, on the DOST Picard's R&D initiatives on the management of African swine fever, our speaker is currently the director of the Livestock Research Division of DOST Picard. He has more than 30 years of experience in government service, focusing mainly on livestock and poultry R&D planning, management, and monitoring. Ladies and gentlemen, let's all welcome Dr. Sinan S. Baguio. Um, thank you, Sir Bunny. May I be allowed to share my screen? Do you see my screen now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And how how is my audio? Okay. Okay, sir. I'm audio. All right. Thank you very much. To our colleagues from Congress, uh, particularly the speaker, Lord Alan Velasco and his team of deputy speakers. To the Presidential Legislative Liaison Office, Yusek Luzerfeda Pascual, Yusek Jacinto Paras, Asek Maria Ruena Flores Saban, Honorable Enrico Aristotel C. Omentado, Chairperson, Committee on Science and Technology, Donald Amado Montes Caballero, Committee Secretary on Science and Technology, to our very own uh, Secretary of the DOST, Sec Boy, to our Picard Executive Director, Dr. Ray, and to Director Lita of the DOST uh, DLLO. I know that all of us now as is, uh, is in the know of what ASF is. Ika nga, ASF needs no further introduction in the Philippines. We also know how ASF have de devastated our local swine industry and how it impacts on the lives of many Filipinos. The effects of ASF is felt from loss of employment, closing of businesses, loss of livelihood, pork shortages, and of course, availability and prices of pork, particularly in urban centers. This presentation will touch on an introduction that will briefly describe the infection and spread of ASF in the country its economic and social impacts on the swine industry stakeholders, and finally, paint a broad picture of the SNT sector's response to the ASF challenge in support of and 
complementing with the ASF management and control programs of the Department of Agriculture's Bureau of Animal Industry. As ASF was first reported in the Philippines in July of 2019, from the initial infected area in the province of Rizal, our latest data show that there are now 171 ongoing ASF outbreaks in 12 regions, 40 provinces, and 466 cities and municipalities, as you can see in the map. Success in the management of ASF would depend on how effective are we in implementing border controls and in slowing the spread of the disease. It is encouraging to note though, that the BAI's monitoring yielded the information that more than 100 cities were, uh, that were previously infected with ASF have been observed to be free from the virus for several months now. However, as of March 2021, losses due to ASF is estimated at about 80 billion pesos, which is about 30% of the total value of the Philippine swine industry. Businesses, jobs, and livelihoods have been lost due to ASF. What is most worrying, though, is the fact that the hardest hit subsector of the swine industry are the small and medium scale players. This is according to a study that was conducted in Nueva Ecija and Camarenes Norte in July to September of 2020. Thus, the DOSTP card in consultation with the BAI and with private sector representatives crafted a 10-year animal health is an SNT roadmap that initially focuses on addressing the problems caused by ASF. The R&D programs and projects that compose the roadmap are planned to be the initial research activities under the soon to be established virology and vaccine uh, Science and Technology Institute of the Philippines, which is currently being submitted for passing into law by both the Congress and Senate. Considered as R&D priorities under the said roadmap are in the areas of disease surveillance and epidemiology, such as sequencing of viral DNA, monitoring of infected areas and spread of infection and other similar activities. <clears throat> the R&D plan also touches on diagnostics, development and testing of diagnostic protocols and development of quick and reliable test kits, vaccine efficacy trials and development, and also therapeutics that will be focused on drug efficacy testing and drug discovery studies from terrestrial and aquatic plants and other sea creatures. The DUSTP card R&D program will be implemented during the period 2021 to 2030. Some projects under this program are already ongoing. Some have been recently approved for implementation and the rest are in various stages of proposal packaging and evaluation. The presentations that you will hear from our resource persons in this webinar are part of the SNT roadmap that I have been mentioning earlier. Thank you very much, and I wish everyone a fruitful day ahead. Thank you very much, Doc Sinan. So thank you for giving us uh, is Picard doing as regards to the ASF. Not only that, he also gave us an overview of what is the ASF situation in the country and also its impact in the, the economy and particularly in the swine industry. So thank you very much, Doc Sinan. Our next topic is on nanogold biosensor test kit for ASF detection. 
For this topic, our resource speaker is a full-fledged Professor Six and a faculty of the College of Veterinary Science and Medicine of the Central Luzon State University for 35 years. She is a licensed veterinarian, a public health advocate of One Health, and a multi-awarded researcher and educator. Her main interest is assembling optimized molecular and nanotechnology di diagnostic protocols of swine and poultry viral infections into novel, rapid, accurate, but affordable test kits. So ladies and gentlemen, let's all welcome Dr. Clarissa Yvonne J. Domingo. Doc Domingo. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh... Will I be sharing the slides or will you on your side will be sharing the Mom, you can share your your presentation. So I'll be giving you the permission. Uh, okay. Share my slides. Okay, we I will okay. Okay. Share. Is I? Na Yes, ma'am. Kita po. Oh, do you me? Uh, ma'am, uh, okay. we have Can you hear difficulty. Me? We have difficulty hearing you, ma'am. So kami na lang po magpipresent so that you can save your bandwidth. Uh, Hello. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma this is the host. Ma'am, uh, you can uh, stop sharing, ma'am. Kami na lang po. Ah, okay. Kasi mahina yung dating po. Ninyo. Yes. Ah, okay. Kami na po ang mag-share ng uh, okay, sige. presentation. Ika yun na lang po. Yes po. Yes po. Okay. Okay, ma'am, you can feed back with your presentation. Okay. Uh, okay, I'll just wait. Okay. So. Can you. Uh, how will you do? I, I play po as power and ganyan. So, hello. Yes, so, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We can hear okay. you po. Medyo putol-putol. Pwede po bang? Yes. Uh, Putol putol na po. So good. Yan. Good morning sa ating lahat. Uh, please. Slow. Next po. Next slide. Yan. African says by in our country. And until now, there is no proved vaccine against the government is now trying 
trying to welcome from this. And the hug uh, Koli until now. virus while the vaccine uh, 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 allowed to, to be used uh, in livestock. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. Okay. So the virus is a large DNA a virus. Double strand, it's uh, uh, like brood, no? Because pag sinabing brood, die hard na isip. So it's a very resistant virus. And the virus uh, uh, contain uh, this uh, points to which is a major antigenic capsaic 30 percent uh, antigenically uh, pro antigenic protein of the virus why very stable next slide next next slide for Okay, so fun. So it works in two Africa air to Georgia is now uh, in food afterwards, it spread to Ukraine. And Ukraine. And then finally it reached, and we know Marami Ma Malata. I'm sorry, uh, Dr. Kla. I'm sorry. I have to. Sorry yes. for the interruption, Dr. Kla. Uh, do you hear me, ma'am? Yes. Yeah, medyo mahirap pong maintindihan. Yes. Yes, because I, I think you have you. a very weak signal. Putol-putol uh -huh. po ang ano, hindi mahirap pong maintindihan. Okay. Uh, Sir Bunny? Yes, ma'am. Okay, po. sige. Oo. Uh, pwede kayang, ma'am, paunahin na po muna natin si Doc Homer, hoping that it, uh, your, your uh, signal will improve a little bit later on. Tapos, uh, tuloy, uh, continue with your presentation after Dr. Homer. Yes, po. Maybe she can find a better, no? Yes, okay. a better location. Signal location. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Uh, sorry, sorry for this. Uh, Dr. Homer, pwede ba kayo na po muna ang yes, okay. Let, let me introduce po. muna si Dr. Homer. So, uh, for our next presentation po, will be on the science-based ASF uh, management strategies. He is a bi veterinarian by profession and an innovative and motivated infectious disease drug discovery scientist with over 13 years of industry experience as lead scientist. He has strong technical skills that encompass bio -mi microbiology, molecular biology, immunology, and biochemistry. Our next speaker is the co-founder and president of the Bioassets Corporation, a private animal disease diagnostic company located in Santo Tomas, Batangas. So let's welcome Dr. Homer A. Pantua. Dr. Homer. Uh, can, every, can everyone see my slide, Bob? Yes, Bob. Can you hear me, Pa? Yes, Pa. Loud and clear. Okay. Yeah. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, 
Many thanks to the Department of Science and Technology, uh, Picard. Um, thank you for the uh, Congress uh, uh, and for inviting me, uh, for inviting bioassets and share our goals and current activities that would support the African swine fever crisis in the Philippines. So what I hope to show you today is a, I will, is a brief overview of our company, Bioassets, and also a brief background on African swine fever and the virus, which uh, Dr. Clarissa Domingo have shown you uh, earlier, and our current projects that focuses on activities that employ science. And lastly, I would like to show you a big picture, a big picture of what our projects hope to accomplish in the future. So bioassets is a holistic animal disease diagnostic solution provider. In 2014, bioassets established its diagnostic lab in, in Santo Tomas, Batangas with scientists, veterinarians, farmers, and entrepreneurs. In 2016, bioassets opened its doors to train veterinary professionals and students with the aim of promoting the importance of veterinary diagnostics in animal health. In 2018, we established a partnership with Indical Bioscience in Germany and Biomeme in the, in the United States to complement our diagnostic development program. In keeping with our objective of serving the industry, this year Bioassets expanded its operation in North Luzon. And we hope to make these technologies accessible to the entire Philippines in the near future. So our mission is to deliver the most current and innovative diagnostic tools and animal health products that will address challenges and unmet needs in the animal industry, specifically in resource limited areas. And we are doing this guided by our core principles. We are a company that values truth seeking, a company that sticks to the science, a company that is focused on goals and projects, a company that has genuine care for people, animals, and environment. We believe that we cannot achieve success alone and we value partnership and collaboration. We are a company that invests and supports its people to reach their full potential. And lastly, we hope to build a culture that nurture life, science, and innovation to serve the people. Our progress and future activities are backed by a solid team of R&D scientists, veterinary diagnosticians, marketing and product development experts, animal nutrition, and also lab animal experts. To date, we have established partnerships and collaboration here and abroad. Some of the most significant partnerships that we have established are with the Department of Science and Technology and Picard, Kansas State University, Silver Lake Research Corporation, and Indical Biosciences of Germany. Our goal is to put our country in the veterinary biotech landscape, if not globally, at least in the Southeast Asian region. So infectious diseases still remain the major cause of losses in animal production. African swine fever has devastated the swine industry, not only in the Philippines, but also in other countries in Asia and Europe. These are not the only diseases that we face in the industry. And there, are, there is a long list of priority infectious diseases in animals. Though there are vac uh, diagnostics and vaccines available for most of them, there is still a need to develop more effective vaccines and parallel diagnostics to help the country respond to disease outbreaks. And this presents a unique opportunities for research. On one hand, the global animal health industry is forecasted to grow by 6.1% in the next five years. This growth is mainly driven by the surge in population that leads to increasing demand for high value animal protein and increasing demand for companion animals. However, the emergence of animal diseases negatively affects animal health and food production. And this is where bioassets and our projects and activities come in. Just a brief overview, uh, Africa in swine fever is a highly contagious deadly viral disease affecting both domestic and wild pigs of all ages. It spreads very quickly and highly fatal. Pig is the only natural host of African swine fever virus. 
the virus that not, does not cause harm to humans or other animals. However, humans and other animals can still be carriers. Found, the virus is found in many countries around the world, as you can as shown by Dr. Domingo in her map of the spread of the African swine fever virus. The symptoms include fever, loss of appetite, lack of energy, abortions, internal bleeding, with hemorrhages visible on the ears and flanks, which suggests that these uh, that the, this disease is really devastating, devastating to the swine producers. It causes sudden death, and there is no available treatment or vaccine for the African swine fever. And just to give you a, a very uh, laymanized uh, virology uh, or biology of the virus. So African swine fever virus is a, is a member of a certain family of virus, Asfaviridae virus. Uh, it is a large complex envelope virus. Envelope uh, pertains to the outer membrane, which contains the molecules that are important for the virus to enter the host cells. And these are very important uh, parts of the virus that we need to know when we develop, when we develop diagnostics and vaccines. It is also the weakness of the virus in terms of sensitivity to disinfection and inactivation. So the virus expresses 54 structural proteins and approximately uh, 100 polypeptides, which shows the complexity of the virus. Here are the major components that either uh, target that are either targets of vaccines and diagnostics development. So the virus has 24 genotypes. And viruses belonging to 1P72 genotypes, it is a, a part of the virus, may, may be zero, serotypically heterogeneous, suggesting that we have to develop a vaccine that can induce a protective immune response against all, against all genotypes. So ASF virus can be transmitted from sick pigs, sick pigs, international travelers, contaminated clothing and shoes, garbage feeding or swill feeding, contaminated vehicles and equipment, feral swine, and com contaminated raw materials, raw materials and feeds. It is important to know where and what to test to prevent and control the transmission of African swine fever. It is important to understand the African swine fever disease dynamics to better guide us in making decisions on what diagnostics tool tools to use. As you can see here, African swine infects, African swine fever virus infects the animals in as early as 24 to 48 hours, and the virus load increases and plateau uh, for more than 10 days and decrease after 12 days when then becomes low uh, and then becomes and progress to low level viremia or the presence of virus in the blood. On the other hand, the antibody response, the, mo the molecule that is responsible to neutralize the virus, only start to increase at day seven, post-infection, and then peaks and plateau after two weeks, as you can see here in blue. What is important to know? Why is it important to know the dynamics? It is important to know this information to, for us to be able to decide which diagnostic tool to use at a certain period of infection. For example, as early as, as in the early period of infection, because there is a high load of virus, the, the, the appropriate de detection tool is an antigen detection, which its efficacy uh, wanes as, as, as the infection uh, progresses because there are no, there is reduced viral load in the animal. Another detection tool is an antibody detection. However, as you can see in the dynamics of the disease, the antibody only starts around 12 days after post-infection, which suggests that you will only be able to detect antibody uh, uh, after 12 days, after 12, after 12 days. And these uh, diagnostic tools is important to detect um, exposures of the herd. However, it is not uh, a uh, a strong or effective tool when we want to detect infection in the early stage of the disease. And as you can see here below, on any time and at a time period of the disease, you, molecular diagnostics 
which involves PCR, the nano gold biosensor that Dr. Clarissa has, can detect the virus, should be able to detect the virus from early infection to even late infection where there is an intermittent viremia or the levels of low levels of virus in the animals. So what are the current African swine fever virus detection tools? As you can see here, I, I laid out the sensitivity, specificity, and the recommendation of the OIE, which is the uh, the, the global uh, reg, uh, the global uh, body that uh, that guides the the animal industry. So as you can see here, PCR, lamp, uh, and a rapid antigen and antibody test. As you can see here. PCR is still the, the most sensitive and the, and, the, with, is, is the, and has the highest specificity of all the tests. As you can see from 95 to 99 and up to 100% sensitivity and specificity respectively. And PCR is still the gold standard and the OIE recommended test for uh, ASF virus detection. However, there are also tests like LAMP, which is a good alternative for PCR and a rapid antigen or antibody test. However, this has very low sensitivity, although higher, although with higher specificity. However, this is only recommended for a herd assay to determine uh, the, the health status or the exposure of the, uh, of the farm. So what are the challenges in the ASF crisis in the Philippines? One is gaps, uh, it's a gap in biosecurity. Another is a lack of point of need testing, a lack in comprehensive surveillance, and lack in uh, capability to isolate the pathogen to better understand what we have, what strain we have in the Philippines. And, and lastly, is there is no available vaccine yet, approved uh, vaccine that can be used for uh, ASF. However, there, there are potential solutions to these challenges. We can improve the biosecurity in back, specifically in the backyard setting, and which is, has become very problematic in terms of transmission from one farm to the other. Another is we can improve on-site detection tools. We should also institute a regular comprehensive and unified monitoring program using the most innovative and most current uh, tools available. We should also establish tools process and train personnel. And from these, we can learn from existing cases, the disease dynamics, the pathogen genetic, genetic profile, and the safe and effective vaccine platform based on the science. So from these, uh, Bioassets conceptualized the Bridges project. It's a brisk response through in-location diagnostics and genome sequencing project, which is a project funded and supported by Bioassets, a private entity, and the Department of Science and Technology through the BISD program. So to, through the Bridges project, uh, Bioassets will bridge the gaps in animal health and ASF problem through the Bridges project by ad addressing the unmet needs in animal disease diagnostics and prevention through a comprehensive and unified approach. So the objective of, of this project are anchored in four areas. First is the development of diagnostics and surveillance through the use of point of need and mobile testing platform. The second is the establishment of an isolation, culture, identification, and characterization capabilities through precision diagnostics. And these first two initiatives will, um, will set the stage for precision vaccinology through the use of customized vaccines. Another is the potential, we'll also explore the potential of chicken antibodies in multiple applications, such as diagnostics and therapeutics. Our vision and mission complements the goals of the Virology Institute of the Philippines and the Livestock Research Program of the DOSTP card. To increase responsiveness to disease outbreaks, bioassets use uses the best available portable molecular diagnostic device for now that can support sample preparations and PCR runs in less than 45 minutes. But the hope in the future is to develop devices like this in collaboration with the Department of Science and Technology. 
This technology platform complements our diagnostic kit development efforts that aim to generate PCR kits, which is the gold standard for on-site testing in collaboration with ITDI of the OST. The goal is to reduce the cost generate, uh, by generating the principal components locally. Moreover, we, we, are, we hope to design a field deployable kit that does not need cold storage. Not only we are developing tools for the industry, we are also in the process of bringing the diagnostics at the point of need to the Bioassets Mobile Laboratory in collaboration with DOST and the Bureau of Animal Industry. A laboratory that will enable rapid response to outbreaks, maintain continuity of operations, support capacity building, sound decision making, enable research and surveillance while maintaining biosafety. The mobile laboratory system will employ the most current and innovative technology to support the diagnostics at the point of need that is designed following biosafety, performance, and efficiency. It will be equipped with sample receiving and biocontainment area that will utilize biosafety isolators. It will also have three zone partitioning to prevent contamination. It will have analytical area that will be equipped with molecular, serological, genomics, and rapid testing capabilities. It will also have storage and office areas and alternative power provisions to ensure continuity of operation, especially in resource limited areas. And these are some of the, the examples of the innovative tools that will be housed in the mobile laboratory. The goal, the goal is to deploy point of need capabilities in the entire country in collaboration with the LGUs and the Department of Agriculture. Through this platform, we can empower the diagnosticians and vet veterinarians to perform on-site testing. The mobile laboratory can be deployed in LGUs, agricultural stations, checkpoints, and slaughterhouses that would address the testing of samples and could help in the prevention and control of transmissions. So on-site, therefore, on-site testing will, will, will happen at the point of need. <clears throat> to put a stronger foundation on our point of need diagnostic platform, we hope to streamline the animal disease responsiveness to precision diagnostics by strengthening our capabilities to isolate, culture, identify, characterize, and archive pathogens using the most current innovative tools. And this is also a project supported by the Department of Science and Technology through the BIST program. This project will support the disease surveillance in our country and set us up for a vaccine development program. Moreover, we don't have to rely solely on the services of foreign laboratories. The precision diagnostics capability will enable us to support a comprehensive surveillance from different samples. For example, blood and tissue, which has been done regularly done right now. We are also uh, establishing environment, uh, 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 diagnostics for environmental samples such as surfaces and fomites, soil, water, meat products, raw materials, and feed products. Such capability will enable us to develop mitigation strategies that could support the animal industry stakeholders uh, in terms of uh, prevention, uh, uh, control of transmission, and in, in their rep repopulation uh, uh, initiative. And as a big picture, I, I hope I, I have made you appreciate that the point of need testing is important in combating the the uh, African swine fever crisis. From the point of need of testing, we will have sample from the surveillance and we will use this sample to isolate and in determine infectivities of these uh, uh, virus. We will also use this sample using the precision diagnostics program by uh, we will identify and, and molecularly and, and characterize molecularly uh, these viruses and also uh, develop a repository such that we will have something to go back to 
in times of uh, need. From the precision diagnostics, we will use this uh, information to support the precision medicine or precision vaccinology program. For example, understanding the disease dynamics and the virus biology will support the vaccine and therapeutic development. And this information will give us, uh, will support uh, in establishing mitigation strategies and policy making, disease prevention and control program that, that will support disease prevention and control program that will make us more self-reliant and self-sufficient. With that, I would like to thank our bioassets team uh, and uh, special thanks to Picard DOST and the Department of Science and Technology BIST program and the Science for Change, uh, UPLB, uh, Central Mindanao Universities, uh, the Bureau of Animal Industry, uh, and our collaborators in Kansas State University, uh, LB Biotech, which is a producer of enzymes uh, uh, locally. Um, and with that, maraming salamat po. Uh, I would happy. I would be glad to answer any questions. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Pantua. So we'll be reserving your questions later on. Maybe we can get back to Dr. Domingo for her presentation. Hopefully, okay na yung kanyang connection. Dr. Domingo, are you ready po to present again? Hello. Yes. Hello. Yes, ma'am. We can okay, hear you, ma'am. Okay. So I'll share the screen again. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. So uh, good uh, afternoon. Uh, good morning again to all of us. And uh, for this morning, uh, I will just orient uh, everybody on what is this nano gold, nano gold biosensor test kit. So, uh, so uh, we have already learned about the ASF zoning map of our. Uh, Department of Agriculture, and we also have learned from the previous uh, speakers that until now we still have uh, no approved vaccine yet, unlike Hag cholera, which unfortunately also shows uh, almost the same clinical signs in pigs. That's why we need a test in order to differentially uh, diagnose the, the ASF from that of hug cholera. We also learned that the uh, ASF is a double-stranded double uh, DNA virus. And usually for uh, diagnostics, the target gene that is usually used is protein 72, which uh, comprises 32% of the total protein mass of the virus. That's why it makes it antigenically stable. Okay. We uh, learned that uh, ASF, that's why it's called ASF because it started in Kenya in 1921 and it spread to Georgia and then later in Russia and then in Poland and Ukraine and in Belgium and China, and knowing that China is already the gateway towards Asia, then it spread to Korea, Vietnam, and later in the Philippines in 2019. So these are the pictures of the pigs dying from ASF in China. And then uh, how China depopulated their pigs and even in backyard farming, pigs were also affected greatly. 
Now, this is a slide that shows in 2017, the, may, the countries where we import our pork. So we have Germany, Spain, Canada, and so on. But then Belgium and Germany was banned from uh, uh, importing from uh, importing pork. Uh, but then uh, smuggled meat and meat product products coming from China was confiscated, no? And uh, so we learned that uh, despite of the ban, uh, this uh, contaminated uh, pork products were able to enter our country. Now, actually, we also learned from the previous uh, speakers that it started in Rizal uh, from uh, food scraps coming from international flights and from seaports, from, uh, from uh, uh, sea vessels, wherein the food scraps uh, were sold as swill in Rizal to backyard farmers. And because of this, uh, it spread to Bulacan and Quezon City. And uh, because the backyard farmers were afraid that their pigs uh, during the stamping out were still, uh, were still uh, alive, they hid their pigs, but later the pigs succumbed to ASF. And so what they did was to just throw the dead uh, bodies to the waterways as we have seen in Marikina River. So we also learned from the other uh, speakers the different clinical forms of ASF. And uh, ASF after five to 15 days exposure to infectious body secretions and excretions of a sick pig will immediately show clinical signs. And there are different forms. We have the per acute form, wherein the pig will just, uh, well, they, the pig, the sick pig will shed the infected amounts of virus 24 to 48 hours just before death. And then the acute forms were in the pigs will suffer from very high fever. They will show huddling, uh, difficulty of breathing and loss of appetite. And the skin will show bluish purple uh, color wherein bleeding is reported to be seen underneath the skin. One to seven days after the clinical signs appear, then the pigs will suffer shock due to excessive fluid in the lungs. And then after that, they will go into coma and finally death. And then there are also subacute forms wherein the clinical signs are less severe than those in the acute stage and the mortality is only 30 to 70% after two to seven weeks if they survive the first phase. And then there are also chronic forms, but the animal will still shed the virus and stop shedding after 30 days. So halos isang buwan, uh, halos isang buwan ang shedding. Now we have to be aware that ASF can affect all ages of pigs. And under cooked pork, dried and smoked pork and carcass meal, if served as will, serve as potential danger to our pigs. So this is a slide that shows the duration of the virus, wherein they remain stable and infective. And we can see at the lower uh, row of the table is that it will remain longer, it remains stable as long as the virus particles are found in clumps that, and they are protected with organic matter on surfaces. So tulad ng mga biofilms o mga natuyong mga uh, dume or mga fluids or serum no, na galing sa uh, sick pigs, so the virus will remain 
uh, stable and infected for a longer time, particularly in contaminated surface. We can also see that even in feed ingredients, the virus was uh, demonstrated present in raw materials uh, used for feeds. Now for the process of cleaning and disinfection in positive farms, we should uh, learn that uh, we just, we, we need not only to uh, clean visible dirt, but we also have to have uh, the surface in long contact time with disinfectants. So usually for the first disinfection, uh, we do uh, removal of the organic and inorganic uh, dirt in the farm. And then we have to prepare the surfaces for washing, for foaming, for clear, clear uh, foaming and pressure wash. You know? And then after that, after the foaming, then we uh, contact, we allow the surface in contact with the disinfectant. And then after the disinfection, we need to check the surface if there are still remnants or residue, residue of the viral genetic material in order to, to know if our disinfection procedure was successful. And after that, we empty the pen for at least 14 days drying and then allow that to be exposed to heat uh, okay, what do you mean by heat? In other words, uh, pag natuyo na, dapat naaarawan yan. So all of this we need to do, especially in farms that were heavily hit before and are now ready for repopulation. And why is, why is the cleaning, washing, and disinfection important? Because from... Uh, from... Uh, experiments we the many uh, researchers found that the total number of live cells let's say the bacteria per square centimeter uh, is reduced as we go uh, cleaning no, the surfaces so if we clean do spraying foaming pressure wash disinfection and drying and finally we check that uh, using a test to see if there are residual ASF viral genetic material. All of this came from the paper of Dr. Raymond Xiu Xiangyang from China. Now, uh, current viral antigen detection tests such as PCRs in all forms, either conventional or real time, you know, they are used for Confirmatory. However, when commercial kits are depleted, procurement takes time. So that's why it becomes very costly and it delays our diagnosis. So that's why we need a faster and simple rapid portable tests okay, for to take over if uh, the uh, PCR uh, kits are not yet available. Okay, so here is a table wherein uh, we have compared the, the, the test kit developed, which is called NanoGold, in regards to the conventional and real-time PCR. Because of, uh, in conventional PCR and real-time PCR, this is the cost for, uh, for a test, for, a, for one test, for conventional PCR, it's 1.5. For real time, it's 3.2. But for nanogold, it's only 350 pesos per test. And we can even pull uh, five uh, samples in one testing. So parang pumapatak lang po na 70 pesos per sample. For amplification, of course, uh, for conventional, it takes two hours. For real time, it's... Uh, lesser because of the probe and the uh, uh, and uh, we have a, a technique we're in when the when we can see that the carbs uh, have hit and lumapas uh, na threshold it means that there is already uh, amplified uh, DNA in the sample 
So it's already detected. Kaya mas mabilis po ang real-time PCR than conventional PCR. But for the nanogold, it only takes 30 minutes. For robustness, of course, uh, conventional and real-time, they are very prone to contaminants and uh, inhibitors. That's why we really need to purify uh, our uh, DNA uh, extracts before testing. But for nanogold biosensor, it's uh, robust because it uses the principle of LAMP and the enzyme here is very robust towards contaminants. And for simplicity, of course, the nanogold is more simple than the other two. For the low resource, um, for the other two, they need uh, sophisticated equipment. But for the nanogold, it only needs a microcentrifuge and a dry bath, which is four times cheaper than the other two. For portability, yes, at present, the, the current... Uh, uh, conventional PCR and real-time PCR, uh, we cannot bring them in the field, but for the nanogold, because of the small, yung equipment po dito sa nanogold is very small, you can uh, hold them, you can uh, carry them, very, uh, at magaan po, no? Uh, it does not uh, require, it's not weighty, no? it, it's not, it's, hindi po siya mabigat, so you can bring them in the farm. And then for use, of course, for PCR, we know it's considered confirmatory. But for the nanogold, uh, it's a screening test. So for prerequisites for repopulation, the source of the uh, ASF infection in the farm must be completely uh, removed. And then we have to uh, put or load a healthy source of breeding pigs such as gills. So dapat mga healthy gills lang ito. And uh, of course, biosecurity system is evaluated and corrected and rehabilitated. So here, as we go through, we can see that in number three, biosecurity, it means that after cleaning, disinfection, and biosecurity upgrade, we have to strictly check uh, the farms uh, using lab tests and sentinel animals if the farm is already ready for total repopulation. So the scientific and efficient contamination program of a positive pig farm shortens the time interval required for a successful repopulation. So here, I would like to introduce to you the ASF Nanogold Biosensor Test Kit. If you will notice, there are two packaging. For the uh, package above, this is because the Department of Agriculture has provided a fund for the mass production of the test kits for use, uh, for use uh, among the LGUs. And uh, below is the package, which because I am an incubate under the Central Luzon State University um, Technology Business Incubate incubation program. So we need to package the uh, test kit. And this is how it is packaged. Blitzkrieg Animal Diagnostic Center. Now the biosensor test kit is very versatile because it can be used on uh, surface swabs, water, oral swabs, fecal swabs, and nasal swabs. So the mode of, uh, the mode of uh, action of this of this uh, test kit is that uh, basically it's it is a combination of lamp and uh, nanotechnology where there are three pairs of primers that amplify the p target sub target gene and these were designed based on the whole length of the p72 from the spleen of the pigs that died in Rizal okay died in Rizal and the test kit has a built-in DNA extraction process already. There's no need to buy, uh, to buy an external uh, DNA extraction kit. And uh, okay, so here uh, in the DNA extraction, 
the sample will undergo lysis phase, extraction phase, and wash buffer phase. All these phases shall require the microcentrifuge to mix well. This is seen at the far upper left of the slide. Finally, the tubes will undergo drying and rehydration. The entire duration will take one hour and 30 minutes. So for the DNA extraction, it's a little bit, um, let's say it's uh, time consuming, but for the actual amplification, after we have uh, extracted the DNA, then it will only take 30 minutes. So when the DNA isolate has been added to the nanogold premix, amplification will only take 30 minutes. And here we use a dry bath. Okay, so the dry buff is, uh, is placed at 58 degrees centigrade for 30 minutes. So this is the dry buff that is being, being used. And here, if the, resu the results are read based on colorimetry. So if the samples contain amplified lamp products, the gold nanoparticles will aggregate which decreases the interparticle distance that causes a shift of the plasma resonance, therefore giving a purple, violet, or bluish gray, which suggests a weak positive. Okay, so here is how we read the, uh, the results. So Furthermore, if the aggregated gold nanoparticles precipitate out of the colloid to form black, dark gray sediments, this suggests strong positive. So here we can see that there are different colors. These colors are, are printed and are printed already on one side of the box. So the user can just uh, refer to the colors after adding the gold nanoparticles. Okay, so here, uh, okay, so this is the test kit. So it ho holds consumables such as the microcentrifuge tubes, mini droppers, tuberculin syringes with needles. The tuberculin syringe replaces the micropipitors that are being used when one is testing at a molecular laboratory. So the, we found out that the tuberculin syringes can replace the micropipitor so that anyone who does not have any background on molecular uh, biology can use, can use the test kit. And there are also rubber floaters and canisters that contain the DNA extraction reagents. And then also after the box, the box also goes with a cooling bag that contains gel coolants, wherein the premixes are stored there at negative 15 degrees centigrade. And also the PCR tubes that contain the gold nanoparticles are wrapped in aluminum foil and this should be stored at four degrees centigrade to extend their shelf life. Now, this, uh, this is a picture of how the oral, nasal, and fecal swabs are collected. So we, we just uh, do swabbing, parang, parang lang sa RT-PCR sa COVID. Ano? So gumagawa rin po tayo ng oral, or we can also do nasal swabs. Okay, And because... Uh, the nano gold, we can uh, pull five swabs in one Ziploc, and one Ziploc can be used as uh, can be tested uh, as one test for the nano gold. Then uh, we can it becomes uh, more affordable for the farmers. Okay, so here, uh, of course, for traceability, we have to see to it that the pigs belong to one pen, okay? So that we can uh, trace uh, what pen uh, has the has the ASF, okay? Now for the surface swabs, we can use our ordinary cotton buds that is moist, moistened with sterile distilled water. Of course, let's remember that we are making everything simple so that uh, others can use the test kit. Okay, so here, uh, so we can uh, do surface swabbings 
on the walls, nipple drinkers, railings, pigways, okay? And uh, here for the water sample, we suggest to collect uh, water from the deep well. So instead of collecting per faucet or for nipple, per nipple drinker, we suggest that for the water sample, we collect directly from the deep well. That is the main source of water in the farm. Now, these are examples of what we did uh, in using the body, body uh, samples. No? So here we examined uh, oral swabs, fecal swabs, and nasal swabs. And we found out that for the, in number four, sample code number four, this pig two is positive for the ASF in the blood for both PCR and nanogold. But when we did oral swab, uh, perhaps uh, the virus has not yet uh, reached the, uh, the oral, oral cavity or in the saliva, but the nanogold was able to capture it. Now here is a slide that shows the uh, surface swabs in a farm that has been uh, hit hardly, uh, hardly hit, no, hard hit by ASF, and we can see that uh, the gray color is the what shows the uh, strong positive. Okay, so the negative is color red, which is the original color of the gold nanoparticles. So we can see here that uh, kahit na po natamaan ang farm na ito and it has been uh, for three months, wala pong laman ng babo yan, ano? and then we did swabbing. So we still found that the pens were carried the residual uh, viral uh, genetic material. So in other words, yung farm po after being hit by ASF, hindi po sila naglinis ng mabuti. So the biofilms were still there. So the virus are still present in the farm. So after this, the farm did thorough disinfection under the uh, supervision of a veterinarian. And uh, uh, successfully, they were able to get rid lahat po ng ng biosensor na test samples nila, naging red na, negative na lahat. And so now they have started repopulating. So here for the water sample, uh, meron pong ano, nakikita po natin na uh, the nano gold can be, can, be, uh, can be able to detect the presence of the virus in the uh, water. Bakit kaya, no? Bakit nagkaroon ng ganyan? Okay, so wait. I, why? Because uh, the uh, farm where the waters, contaminated waters came from, they buried their dead pigs within the perimeter or within the perimeter of the farm. So we expect that after the rain, the, the yung mga katas, the leachate has has uh, reached the groundwater. And because, uh, of course, due to the deep well and the jetmatic, yung binobomba yung too big, of course, uh, the water contained the virus. No? And uh, after we found that uh, the nanogold uh, showed a positive, the positive reactor, the reactors from the samples in the nanogold were uh, subjected to PCR and were submitted for genetic sequencing. We found out that, that uh, what uh, the nanogold found were 98 to 100% identical with published ASF's P72 nucleotide sequences after blast analysis. And for the phylogenetic and phylogeographic analysis from spleen, blood, surface swabs, water, and feces, we found that there are two variants, the uh, genotype 2A and genotype 2B. So genotype 2A, they came from the 2020 isolates, while genotype 2B from 2019 isolates. So the Department of Agriculture suggested that when we do, when we use blood, particularly to survey the hog movement, we do PCR, but for repopulation activities, 
uh, they uh, suggested to do surface swabs and water analysis uh, using the biosensor test kit. So here, the Department of Agriculture uh, has two programs, what we call the Babay ASF or Bantay ASF sa Barangay and Inspired. So this is a twin program where in for the Inspired, this the acronym comes from Integrated National Swine Production Initiatives for Recovery and Expansion or Inspire. And Inspire is used for particularly the objective is for hog repopulation. So for the Babay ASF, you can see that there are two uh, violet arrows here. So for after uh, cleaning and disinfection for the upper arrow, the first arrow, uh, the, uh, bio, the nanoball biosensor will be used for checking the environment. If the biosecurity profile of the farms are already ready for uh, receiving sentinel animals. And when the sentinel animals come in, then again, PCR and lamp test, which is the nano gold, will be used to check the, the, a, if the sentinel animals are indeed free from the ASF. Now, for the ongoing validation studies on blood and meat, fresh or frozen, which is funded by DOSTP card, we are now uh, doing that at the moment. Uh, unfortunately, we were, we, the <laughs> we are now in uh, home quarantine because uh, the uh, our university are is in lockdown due to some COVID positive cases. Okay, so acknowledgement. Of course, we would like. Uh, First, we individually, we are one drop together. We are an ocean. So indeed, we have to really unite uh, all our efforts in order to contain this ASF. So I would just like to thank uh, the our uh, Father God, who is our spiritual mentor of all the wisdom and favor during the entire test kit development. Of course, the funding agencies, uh, the Department of Agriculture and DOSP card, and the vet med of Central Luzon State University. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Domingo. So maraming salamat po for the Nano Gold Biosensor Test Kit. And actually, for this uh, project is a uh, collaboration between different uh, agencies. Uh, DOSP card provided funding support for the validation of the ASF Nano Gold Test Kit. DA provided support for the mass production for the initial distribution of the mass kit. And also, especially, yung CLSU uh, developed the test kit. So, maraming maraming salamat po for this collaboration and for this technology. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are now in the open forum part of this webinar meeting. So fortunately, we still have with us Dr. Baggio, Dr. Domingo, and Dr. Pantua, despite their busy schedule, to answer any questions or clarifications that you may have regarding the topics that we have discussed this morning. Okay, so who would like to throw the first question? Sino pa ang gusto magtanong? from the participants. Kung wala pong uh, question, I'll throw the first question uh, just to start the ball rolling for the of open forum. This is a question for Baguio. So is there available vaccine for ASF from abroad? And is there a plan for DOST Picard to support R&D in the development of local vaccine for ASF? So meron po bang uh, Dr. Baguio for this? Uh, do you have any answer for these questions? Um, yes, uh, thank you. Thank you for that question. Yes, there are already vaccines. Uh, that are developed abroad. However, itong mga vaccines na ito ay hindi pa po sila nabigyan ng, ng permit to be 
distributed commercially. However, the, the Bureau of Animal Industry has already started um, doing some, some uh, efficacy trials of a vaccine that they have access through a partnership with the Vietnam government. Uh, ongoing na po yung trial on a limited scale. And the DOST also is preparing for a wider scale, scale testing of vaccines, whatever vaccines that would be made available to us from foreign countries. And for the second question, if we have plans of developing our own vaccine, yes, the vaccine development, uh, initially prioritizing ASF, but later on we will consider other economically important diseases of livestock and poultry, is uh, among the, the priority activities of R&D activities of the DOST under the virology and vaccine science, um, tech, uh, uh, science institute of the Philippines. Nasa plano po natin yung sir. Maybe Dr. Homer can, can add something to that. Yeah, uh, briefly, po. Uh, uh, just to add uh, a few notes on Dr. Sinan's uh, answer, there are vaccines that are in development right now. Uh, there are the, for example, the Vietnam uh, uh, vaccine platform that was uh, borrowed from the U.S. Uh, Department of Agriculture, uh, which uses the gene deleted strain. However, this needs to be. Uh, uh, this needs to be, the, the efficacy needs to be confirmed uh, because there has been reports that, uh, for example, in China, they also use the gene deleted strain and they've encountered a lot of problems with uh, um, reverting to uh, the highly pathogenic uh, strains, reverting back to infectious strains. And another is, uh, one is an inactivated strain inactivated uh, vaccine platform that is brought by another a private entity. And I think that the Department of Agriculture is con will be conducting a trial soon. So hopefully these vaccines can, will, will get good data from these vaccines, but there are other small companies in the US and in, in, uh, in Europe that are developing vaccines. However, they are not approved yet. Mm -hmm. So, I think in terms of vaccine development, ASF vaccine development in the Philippines, um, I think it's doable. Um, it might need more, uh, it needs a lot of, it's very costly, but if we could start with something and that that is doable, it, I think it's doable. Thank you very much, Dr. Pantua and Dr. Sinan Baguio. I think that's a good, good, that is good news for all of us because um, we are hard hit, not only the, the, the human population, but even swine and another. So left and right, we have to contend with the different uh, viral diseases. So for those who would like to ask questions, po, uh, yung sila ang magatatanong, you can just raise your hands and we'll acknowledge you. And then siguro when we, you are acknowledged, you can... Uh, say kung kanino yung question is na being asked and then ask your questions and saan po kayong uh, agency or group belonging. Okay, meron na po tayong uh, questions from the chat box coming from uh, um, Edna Brampio. Uh, is ang ASF test po ba ay para lang sa big farms or pwede rin maging available for backyard racers who like to answer the questions? The question. Dr. Domingo or Dr. Baguio? Um, uh, Ma'am Kla, can you go first? Susunod ako. Okay. Uh, first, for backyard farms, it's better that they should be clustered. And when they are clustered, let's say in one purok or one sitio, and then the LGU, let's say the municip uh, the provincial vet in the area, uh, is called for and uh, they will do the swabbing for these uh, farms and then from there 
uh, the let's say for instance in Batangas, the provincial vet office there has the capacity already to do um, nano gold biosensor. So they do they help the backyard farmers by clustering them, and then they uh, uh, do the swabbings for the farmers, uh, and then they do that testing. So that immediately they will already know if the farm has this uh, remnants or the residue of the viral uh, genetic material. So that's why they will advise the farm owners, backyard farm owners, ay kailangan maglinis pa kayo, ganyan ganyan, hindi pa kayo ready, ganun. Tapos may mga biosecurity officers who also are uh, accredited uh, by under the Babay ASF program of the DA. And they do the scoring of the biosecurity profile of the farm so that the farm will indeed be subjected to biosecurity prof, uh, scoring of the biosecurity officer plus uh, checking or evaluating the surfaces of the or the farm itself by, by checking on the surface and the water samples. And finally, uh, they will be given sentinel animals. Can I continue with that? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, actually, <clears throat> the BAI is already doing its monitoring and they are now uh, testing uh, ASF, the presence of ASF virus in previously infected areas. Now, as to the question whether or not the kit can be used by small farms, yes, it is. And in fact, the kit is among the primary resources why we developed the kit. The, the, the one that is being developed by Dr. Clark is for the medium and the small so that they can afford the testing. You have noticed in the presentation that the cost to test is quite cheap. Also, um, we, need, we need the kit uh, for wider testing before, as mentioned by Dr. Kla, before the repopulation, because we have to be somehow uh, sure that uh, the, the virus is not present in the area anymore. Mm -hmm. Now, at the moment, the testing are done in commercial farms, but the Picard also has the plan to fund a project that would produce more of the kits so that we can also do testing in small and backyard, I mean, small and medium parts. So nasa plano po yun. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Baguio and uh, Dr. Domingo. Any other questions po? One question na itatanong din, if we go through the LGU uh, route, uh, how can the backyard racers initiate the process na ano? Nang, pwede ba kaming makahingi or they can access the, the test kit by monitoring ba yun? If they, they have so many, many cases, so initiate yun? Or how do they initiate yung request for testing in their, their locality? Okay. Uh, may I, may I yes, answer? Yes, ma'am. Uh -huh. So, dito sa Babay ASF, uh, the Agriculture Training Institute has already uh, made several webinars with all the regional, uh, regional, like what's this? RFO, regional field offices throughout the country. So they've already uh, trained or somehow oriented these people on the process of uh, doing biosecurity profiling and uh, recruiting biosecurity officers. So with this, along with this, uh, they were also oriented on how to use the kits. And of course, screening po ang nanogold, PCR pa rin po ang, ang, ano, ang confirmatory. Pero dahil nagmamadali po, uh, kailangan po na na ma-check mo na, screening, no? ma-check. So that's why uh, they do this. And uh, for the ordinary farmers, of course, they cannot, they cannot do or act 
actually uh, handle or use the kids. What the government or the DA did was to uh, immobilize ang mga LGU vets para sila po mismo ang mag-reach out dito sa mga uh, small hold farmers. So ngayon, kung may isang farm halimbawa na medyo may kaya, kaya, kaya niyang gumawa ng testing ng sarili niya, uh, kung private po siya, he could not access the kits funded by DA. So he has to access the other private, yung Blitzkrieg, doon po siya. Doon po siya. Mag-aano. Kasi yung Blitzkrieg po, under po yan sa CLSU, it's a technology incub uh, incubator. It's an incubator of the CLSU uh, TBI. So eh, dito, pwede na po silang mag-access if they want to. Yun po. Follow-up question, ma'am, siguro. Uh, aside from the DA funding for the production, mass production, are you planning to produce it also? How many? And would it be free kung outside of the DA funding and production? Uh, nag, kasi po, uh, under sa Blitzkrieg Animal Diagnostic Center, ito po ay under sa CLSU, uh, technology incubate po ako, uh, business incubate. So we need to have some revenues. Kasi po, nagbabalik rin po ako <laughs> sa university nagbabayad po ako ng 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 60% ng income ano uh, so kumbaga sa ano eh kailangan po na maningil pag pag private na po ganoon pero um, mura lang po talaga mura po yung uh, yeah. Sir Bani yes po may I um Dr. Kla, I just want to be clear, uh, this Blitzkrieg company that you have been mentioning, is this the one that was started out of the DOST Picard started, I mean, funded project? Yes po. Ito po yung galing sa Andali PED RT Lamp. And then, nag-accelerate na po ako. That's why TBI is very happy kasi I'm one of the accelerators from the yep. TBI, ano, yeah, and also the technology incubation program is also supported by the DOST card, isn't it? Yes, yes po. Yes. Po. So, ma'am, uh, request lang for the DOST. <laughs> um, for the DOST, we, we also need to be, um, maybe the, the term recognized is so much, um, acknowledged for yes, what, what the DOST has made, has created in the yes, development po of these products. Salamat po. Yes po. Okay, thank you very much, Doc Sinan and Doc uh, Domingo. Uh, for Dr. Pantua, kung wala po tayong questions from the participants, uh, one question is, what is would be the role of BA, the Bureau of Animal Industry, by in the implementation of the ASF management strategies that you mentioned? And in your opinion, how long will it take for the Philippines to somehow control and manage the ASF? given our current situation? First, uh, to answer the first question, po, oh, the, so the, the, the Bridges Project is so, uh, partly supported by the Department of Science and Technology, but uh, the mobile laboratory uh, unit, uh, pro, mobile laboratory program will be part of the elevated uh, response to ASF through the Bureau of Animal Industry. We are in conversation already and through the help of DOST, we are uh, planning on how we are going to deploy. But um, right now, the idea is to deploy uh, initially uh, uh, the mobile laboratory unit in Mindanao, uh, in Visayas, and one in Luzon. Um, to be managed by a specific local government unit or veterinary schools that will be working with the Bureau of Animal Industry and the Bioassets Corporation such that uh, we will have a comprehensive and unified response to uh, the crisis. Uh, the, one of the problems that we have in the industry is that um, we have to have uh, we, we lack the, the comprehensive uh, surveillance. So if we can put a comprehensive surveillance that is managed in, in a unified approach, I think that would work best uh, if BAE, the local government unit, and us, um, um, private, sec private sector will uh, work together. 
And the reason why we are there is we are developing the platform for the industry. And at the same time, uh, there are uh, reagents that are not Pre, uh, that are not readily available through the government funding. That's why through the private entity, we will be able to supply those reagents. And in terms of, your, in, in, with your second question, whether how long will it take us to stump the ASF? Right now, I have no answer for that because uh, it's, a, it's a really big problem, not only in the Philippines, but the entire swine global swine industry um, um, if we can have a vaccine sometime soon then that would help the industry in preventing the spread and controlling the spread or controlling the spread from those infected areas to to the non naive areas such as uh, Cebu Palawan and other areas but right now it's 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 hard to say how long will it take? Because we are in the, we are actually in the middle of the problem right now, and we there is no vaccine. Right now, what we need to do is we have to stand intensify the diagnostic and surveillance program in the country, manning the ports, the checkpoints, uh, the traffic of animals such that we prevent the transport or the traffic of infected animals to naive regions. Next is we, through the support, I think through the support of the DOST, we should carefully, uh, carefully assess the efficacy of the vaccines that will come in in the Philippines. And to be able to do that, we have to train people, we have to put equipment because um, we cannot afford to bring a vaccine that will actually cause a problem such that like what is happening in other countries in Asia right now. Mm -hmm. okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Pantu. I think that would be uh, something that we can act on uh, or we can ask yes. people from Congress to help us address. Mm -hmm. okay, po. Everybody. Yes, po, Dr. Uh, yeah, in relation to what Dr. Pantu uh, has mentioned earlier, um, about the unified approach. Let me just um, give an assurance to our public that that's one of the priority activities of the, the Picard DOST, um, trying, coordinating all these activities and creating venues where we can put together all those working um, in the, our fight against ASF to talk. And try to collaborate and complement each other's efforts. So isa po yun sa mga primary activities na ginagawa, ginagampanan ng Picard DOST. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Doc Sinan. Uh, I'd like just to read yung mga comments from uh, the chat box. So from Dr. Felipe, it's, she said, uh, thank you very much to Dr. Ibora and the Picard team for the very good resource persons that presented today. We are happy to, that we have concrete efforts that are underway to address the ASF. And also from uh, the, the one who sent the questions, Edna, thank uh, Dr. Clarissa for the comprehensive answer to her questions. And also thank you to Dr. Baguio. Thank you then po, Ma'am Edna, for that question. Now, we have another question from uh, the committee secretary, uh, Mr. Caballero. He, he chatted, uh, contrary to the growing worry about ASF, the virus spreading among pigs is harmless to human health. However, it has also been noted that the virus can survive even in processed meat such as corn, pork, bacon, and maling. How will this affect food security? Meron pa siyang follow-up question. When is the proper time to determine if ASF is already on the meat products? How about processed meat products from abroad? Sino po ang sasagot? Would like to answer that question. Um, Sir Bunny, can, yes, I, can I take that question? Yeah, okay, po. Actually, there are already protocols uh, that we can use to test whether or not meat and meat products um, contain uh, the, the, the virus, the ASF virus. In fact, um, one of the projects that has been recently approved for funding by the DOSDP card is along this line. 
um, testing the different protocols of test, uh, yeah, evaluating, I would say, the different protocols used to test ASF virus in meat and meat products, and also trying to develop um, systems or um, testing protocols that would be very simple that can be used by almost anyone everywhere. Yun lang po, yun yung ating sagot doon. Okay po, other, other resource, other uh, answer from the resource person. Dr. Domingo would like to answer po. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, first, uh, first, the ASF, of, buti na lang, it's not zoonotic. It uh, does not affect humans. But the problem is, so, so for the food safety, uh, when we say food safety, ibig sabihin, our uh, target here are for human consumption. So, walang problema yon. But however, if these food scraps are used for swill feeding, that's the problem. Yan na po ang mag arise na ano. Kasi nga po ay, uh, well, we know that the virus is uh, still viable. Lalo na if there is blood and if it is kept in very cold temperature, they can survive. Uh, but not sa freezer, no? but somehow sa 4 degrees centigrade or sa, they can still be viable. So that's why if we use them uh, for swill feeding, uh, delikado yung mga baboy na makakakain po dito. So that's why we really have to ban swill feeding talaga. So that's it. Uh, may I add? Yes, well, no. Do. Yeah, just to add uh, on Dr. Sinan and Dr. Clarissa's, uh, Dr. Domingo's uh, answer, uh, I would like to emphasize that the ASF virus is not uh, a human health concern. It does not, indu it does not uh, uh, induce or uh, progress to a productive infection in humans. And the only reason why we should not eat ASF as uh, as emphasized by, by Dr. Domingo and Dr. Uh, Baguio, is that we would like to prevent the transmission of the virus from these food scraps to uh, infected to, 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 to the farms, either the backyard or commercial. And one problem in the Philippines right now is that how do we do that? For example, because how do we that we do that in such a way that we protect the, the animal health uh, the animal industry, and we also protect the, the meat producers. The, re the way we do that is we, we empower or we, we uh, provide them the tools that can actually give them results uh, in, a, in, a, in a timely manner. Kasi kung hindi timely yung pagbigay ng results, malaking lugi ang para sa mga meat producers and importers ang mangyayari. Kasi... Um, imagine if they get stranded, the meat gets stranded for a long time in ports or in traffic. Masyadong ano yun, uh, lalo na kung negative siya. If it's positive, then it has to be stopped. That's why we, are, we, we encourage the, uh, the we encourage DOSD, we encourage our uh, lawmakers to support uh, and equip our uh, our um, our in research institutions and regulatory regulatory bodies to provide equipments uh, that can test all these products at the point of need. And that is the only way we can do this because getting samples from ports and sending it to a laboratory will take time. And that is not efficient. That is not efficient. And then if you support that, it will improve efficiency of testing and improve efficiency of uh, uh, decision making. Mm -hmm. Thank, you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Pantua. I think that is uh, that can be helped with the policies. Diba? So, um, sabi nga ni Dr. Pantua, this is not a human health concern, but I think it's a big economic and consumer concern. Diba? So, ang taas ng presyo ng pork, wala kayong supply, and it's affecting uh, individuals and consumers uh, economically. So we also have long list of uh, long list of people who we have to thank. 
uh, coming from uh, DLLO. So we'd like to thank uh, Re Sec uh, Comsec Rita Macabulos of the Agrarian Reform, Val Palanca of Trade and Industry, Comsec uh, Lourdes Mendoza from Poverty Alleviation, Estenelli Solis from the Youth and Sports Affairs, uh, Cheryl Posadas of the Sustainable Development Goals, uh, John Francis Poncilio of the Transportation, Aleli Gumpal of Southern Tagalog, Abi Apostol of the Land Use Committee, Maria Mariel Ursal of the Cooperatives Development, Glenda Daco of the Climate Change Committee, Michelle of uh, Comsec Michelle of Committee on uh, Food Security, uh, Committee on Mindanao Affairs, Committee on Labor and Employment. And the Committee on Science and Technology, Agrarian Reform, Suffrage and Electoral Reforms, Rural Development, Housing and Deve uh, Urban Development, Games and Amusement, Women and Gender Equality, and Creatives Industries and the Legislative Franchise. Thank you very much for all the, uh, for the support. Uh, can we do we have uh, other questions? If we don't have any more questions, uh, we would like to thank uh, our resource persons today. Um, indeed, we were all enlightened in the inputs that you have shared with us. And uh, we have, have now reached the end of our webinar meeting. And to formally close this event, allow me to call the executive, uh, the Deputy Executive Director of, for R&D of DOST Picard. Let's call on Dr. Feliciano G. Calor, Jr. Dr. Calora. So habang wala po si Dr. Kala, we'd like to thank uh, Dr. Pantua, Dr. Domingo, and Dr. Sinan Baguio for uh, sharing with us your, your inputs, your presentations. Uh, so it's uh, for us to know that we are doing something. Yung R&D is helping out in addressing this issue. Yes. So ha habang wala pa si Dr. Kalora, we would like to ask everybody in their, their videos so that we can... Uh, we can have our photo operation, uh, photo opportunity. So, Dr. Calora, before po the closing uh, message, we would like to have the ano muna, photo op Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I had problems with the connection, so I had to log in with a different uh, ID. Ah, okay, pa. Sige pa. So, photo opportunities muna po tayo. Then we'll have the closing message. Picard team, ang galeng. Galeng. Thank you, thank you. This is actually the biggest, uh, the, our biggest webinar because 23 committees participated. The last uh, uh, webinar we had, on, ang, ang record namin was only 20 committees. Now you have... 23 committees and 11 comsex. Thank you. Okay, Paul, with that, we can uh, ask uh, Dr. Calora to share his uh, message. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, Secretary de la Peña, the 23 committee. Uh, under Congress, uh, the, um, the Comsex, uh, we'd like to uh, thank you for participating in this uh, a in this uh, ASF uh, SNT response to to the ASF uh, 
Bibles. We hope that uh, Picard uh, helped uh, give some information about our initiatives for ASF. And we hope that uh, you, you will uh, always consider Picard as a partner in um, addressing the uh, needs of our nation to address uh, existing problems, especially in the current pandemic. We'd like to thank you also for considering Picard as a major player and a source of uh, knowledge and uh, science and technology to uh, uh, address our problems. Uh, for Dr. Pantua uh, and the rest, uh, we'd like to thank you also for uh, sharing your expertise, your time with us, and being a partner in um, our SNT interventions uh, for existing problems. Uh, I'd like also to, to congratulate Dr. Sidan Baguio, the director of our Livestock Research Division, for facilitating this event. In case uh, there are some issues, questions, or concerns that may arise after this webinar, uh, please feel free to contact us through our uh, executive director, Dr. Rinaldo Ebora. Um, we'd like to thank everyone uh, and uh, yeah, stay safe and uh, goodbye to everyone. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Thank you. So, we will continue with the photo opportunity. Hindi siya natapos kanina. And yes, we will be uh, sharing with you your recording of this uh, webinar's uh, meeting. So, siguro we'll just coordinate with uh, concerned people para sa sharing of the recording. And Dr. Bunny? Yes, Paul. Yeah, can I have a very uh, short time to to thank uh, the staff of Picard who worked for this webinar. Uh, let me acknowledge the contributions of uh, Dr. Ronilo De Castro. Of course, you, Sir Bani, uh, Dr. PJ um, Leron of the ACD. Maraming salamat, Ms. Mayet, for uh, allowing your staff to support us in this activity. Uh, si Erwin and then many other staff of the other staff of the ACD who supported us in the in the organ in organizing this event. Maraming maraming salamat po. Back to you, Sir Bunny. Okay na po ba tayo sa ano sa photo? Okay one. Okay po, we'll uh, be Capturing the photo pa, hindi pa tapos. Okay na? Okay, one. Slide one, yung batch one, the photo, uh, the audio, uh, the video. Slide two, or batch two. So smile lang po kayo, hindi natin alam saan kayong uh, batch makukuha. Continue smiling. Batch three. Batch four. Okay, maraming salamat po. And I'd like to close this seminar with the acknowledgement of all the congressional uh, committees that joined us today, 23 nga. Especially, we would like to thank especially yung uh, Committee on the Science and Technology. And also thank you very much to the DOST DLLO office. Maraming maraming salamat for helping us coordinate this webinar's uh, meeting. And also I'd like to thank Secretary. She, he stayed, he stayed the most of the most part of the seminar. Maraming maraming salamat po. And thank you very much to the Livestock Research Division. And also nakalimutan natin yung MIS uh, for helping us out in, in, in the connection. Okay po, thank you very much. And I hope we have a safe and healthy uh, ahead. Sana lahat tayo would stay healthy and safe. Maraming salamat. Thank, thank you, Dr. Ray and Dr. Jofel. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Maraming salamat.